Welcome to Underrated Guitar Tips with Sean Daniel, where the only thing more underrated than the guitar tips is BuzzFeed's contribution to society for having a Powerpuff personality test. Right, so today we're going to do is we're going to talk about adding stuff on top of chords melodically that you can use either in your rhythm guitar playing or your soloing, okay? So we're going to start with minor chords and we're going to move on to major chords. It's going to be really cool. First thing we're going to do is A minor. Okay, great chord to start with. Great way to lead it off, kind of like Blossom was like the leader of the Powerpuff Girls. That was who I got on the personality test, in case you guys were wondering. But what what you might want to do is inflect this chord, okay? So here's A minor, open A, 2D, 2G, 1B, open E. Now, when I say inflect a chord, it's something that you can do to add to make it sound a little spicier, right? So uh, a couple different things that you could do are maybe think of the notes in this key on the B string, okay? So right now we're holding down the first note, the first fret on the B string, which is a C, being the third, the minor third of an A minor chord, okay? So other notes that are available to us on the string in this area would be open B, 1B, and 3B. B, C, and D would be the notes, okay? Now, you may have already come across songs that use variations of this over this chord, something like... Okay, but one cool thing you can do is actually add these same variations in other places on the neck. So we're going to stay in this key, but we're going to do it over a different chord. So we're going to move it higher up the neck to do something in D minor's position, okay? And then kind of seeing how these chord shapes work in open position and translating them higher up the neck is something that I find super, super valuable for your lead playing and your rhythm playing, okay? Now, if you've ever played a D minor bar chord rooted on the A string, it looks like this. So five on the A string, seven and seven on the D and G string, six on the B string, and then optionally if you want to get that fifth fret on the high E string, you can. But the important thing to do is to see the shape. Here's the A minor shape, right? You can use that exact A minor shape here, but then slide it to what I'm thinking of is like the seventh fret because that's gonna be the highest fret that my fingers are fretting, okay? And then if I can isolate just the D, G, and B strings, I'm getting that D minor triad, a three note chord, okay? So A. Sounds cool if I'm just isolating those strings. Another thing you could do is actually keep that open A string and open E string and don't worry about it ringing out because those notes are in the key. Which I think is easier than going A minor to G minor. It does have a different sound, but it's good to have just both of them under your belt. Or even A minor to D minor in an open position. And we can do this for the other minor chord in this key, which would be E minor. So all we have to do is go from this D minor D sharp minor, two frets higher, and now we have a much higher up the neck example of an E minor chord, okay? So it's always good to have variations, and we're gonna talk next just about how you can kind of turn these into licks and stuff, right? So we've got A, D minor, E minor, A minor. Now those same variations we did over the A minor chord, are both gonna work. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna add those variations to the D minor chord here. Right? But thinking of this as far as like in relation to that open position here where we just opened up that B string, we really just went back one from one B to open B. You do the same thing here just by that. Now you can either reach back here. Sounds kinda cool. And then add your pinky to the B string right here. So now the notes that we have are gonna be 7 D, 7 G, and then the B string, six, five, and eight. And then thinking about this, we can start playing lead stuff like this. Okay, so I just made a little lick out of that. And we're gonna just talk about the exact notes that I'm playing here and how we can add it to chords right after I tell you about the sponsor of this video. Today's video is sponsored by Phoenix Pro. They have sent me the new personal wireless system. This is the PTM33. 
I've worked a lot with Phoenix Pro on wireless stuff before, but this is the first time that I've had a system this robust. So basically what this is, and they have smaller iterations of this too, but it's a four channel, uh, a four unit wireless monitoring system. So what happens is, if you've ever played live shows, you know that it can be hard to monitor yourself if you're playing with more than just one person, right? So this is cool because it actually is super, super affordable. It comes with four body packs, and each of the body packs actually has their own headphones that you can use, or you can actually use your molded headphones just by plugging it into the eighth inch adapter here. So again, these are battery powered, and the nice thing is there are four different inputs on the back of this, so you can have four different mixes going to four different monitors. It's perfect if you're playing a small band or even like some kind of like worship type setup. And never before has something like this been so accessible. So again, it's cool. Uh, every channel of the four receivers has a left and right in and a left and out loop out. So you take a send from your board or mixer into the inputs and then that'll sync up with whichever one you sync up on the front, right? So you can actually have four different mixes going to four different players. And there's also a loop out loop out is really cool because you should be recording your shows and uh, you can actually just take whatever you're directing in and then loop it out to either a recorder or just like a different uh like monitor or something like that like a wedge monitor so thank you to phoenix pro for sponsoring this they have like really just great wireless inexpensive wireless gear so i'm gonna link you in the description but they are the sponsor for today's video thank you to phoenix pro all right so now let's get back to that lick that we did on that d minor board so uh, what I did here is I slid in to the higher part of that shape, okay? So remember, when I said I'm taking that A minor shape like that, where the seventh fret on the D and G string, that's going to be in my mind's eye where the base of that A minor is. Now I'm going to use my pointer finger to do it differently because... I get a little different of a tone and I'm a little stronger with this as far as sliding goes. An underrated move sliding from the D string into the G string, which again is going to be the fifth to the root note. This is actually the root note D. Slept on move, just like Blossom is, uh, is slept on. Actually, Blossom's not slept on, I'm sorry. Bubbles is slept on as a member of the Powerpuff Girls. And Buttercup, really. Blossom gets a little too much credit for being the leader when, you know, we don't have to go there. But anyways, that's the beginning of that look. We just go 7, slide into it, and then my pointer finger is right there, 7G. So D to G, and then I'm getting that highest inflection, remember, from where my pinky was in the chord, but now I can get my middle finger to kind of get a little more more of that tasty vibrato into a lick like that. So 70, 7G, 8B, I'm backing that up all in the B string, 6, 5, 6, and then 6 to 7 on the G string. And that's more of like a proper lick or kind of a solo thing, but you can start right there on that D minor. Okay, so you can kind of see how learning inflections and then bringing them up the neck is something that's actually really important. We could do the exact same thing over really any of these minor chords. Okay, you could even do it on the A minor higher because remember, this is open A minor. You can go up 12 frets to go to the next octave higher. So I can take it all the way up to this Martin D18. Again, this doesn't have a cutaway, so this is a little difficult. But that's kind of like the highest reach on this guitar specifically, but it sounds really kind of cool. And then you can do the same thing on the E minor, which remember we did here. Now I do want to take a second to talk about this E minor chord and how if we do this lick, it sounds exactly like the other ones, but just in an E minor position. Now the interesting thing about E's spot as in the key of C being the third note, C, D, E, uh, this would be the Phrygian mode, which has what's called a flat two. So one of these notes is not going to be the same if we're sticking in the key. And this is where you can get some really cool sounds. So if we take this E minor lick, instead of going here, this note right here, the seventh fret on the B string, is actually an F sharp. So if we wanted to stay in the key, we'd have to 
get this note right here, that sixth note on the B string. So if we actually wanted to stick in this right here, we would want this right here. We would want to have that F note over an E minor, which has a very distinctive sound. So this is a way that you can kind of like use this shape to maybe change the sound and flavor of what you're doing. That's a very Phrygian mode type sound. If, if the modes and stuff aren't your, your cup of tea, that's fine. Uh, I explain them a lot more in depth in my Patreon, which I'll also link below because there's like tons and tons of lessons on from very beginner to like more modal type stuff going on. But I did want to kind of just make that distinction that the the third minor chord, the three chord in any key, again, A minor and C major are the same key, C major, D minor, E minor. That third one has a flat two, a minor second, which is a little bit different, a little spicier, okay? So I would be remiss to not talk about that. But again, all these cool licks are coming from just this open A minor chord, which we can kind of do higher up the neck. But that doesn't mean that you can't add different cool hammer-ons and stuff and inflections just over minor chords. Let's do a major chord as well. Let's do it in... Uh, Let's start it in a different key. I want to talk about uh, the key of E major because there's a really pretty thing that you can do when you drone an open E string and then have a hammer-on inflection in the middle of it, okay? So what we're going to do is going to sound like this. Okay, so I'm getting a little lower register here, but what I'm doing is I'm taking a major six chord and turning it into a major seven chord okay so what do you mean by that it's the same kind of idea as inflecting open minor chords but now we're just taking it in more of a more of a seventh chord approach so again one of my favorite chord voicings is this right here i've got open e seven on the a string which is another e and then i have six on the d string and eight on the g string Okay, so I have a root note, another root note, it's major third, and it's major seven. The cool thing about major chords is they can all be major six chords as well. So all I have to do is take that major seven and go a step back. And then I end up with root, root, major third, six. Okay, so open seven, six, six. And as long as I'm kind of stopping here on the G string, I'm really going to hear when I change that from a major 6 to a 7. Now it can get lost if you want to add that open B and E, but it sounds kind of cool too. See how it doesn't... I can get that hammer on, but it doesn't stick out as much because I have that top end. So again, just different types of sounds for what you're going for. Again, I actually kind of prefer having that B and E on there, but I don't get the essence of maybe that major six to seven like, like I would if I make sure I mute the B and E. And you can mute those in different ways. I'm just using my fingers to hold the B and E string so they're not vibrating, or you can just kind of stop short on your pick, okay? Now, that's all good over the one chord and the four chord, which become major seven chords. But what it will not technically work for, just like we talked about that Phrygian thing, is for a dominant seven chord. Okay, so let's say this is going to be... Let's go back to the key C, all right? Where let's kind of change our tonal center by just playing some C major to A minor stuff. All right, we can do the same thing. C, it's major third, it's major six, and then it's major seven. Three, two, two, then four, right? You kind of heard sometimes I can get that chord there. Now, on the four chord, it'd be an F, which I'm doing the same thing, but now to the eighth fret on the A string. It's kind of cool having that little hammer on thing. And then if I go to the 5 chord, which would be a G, now if I go root, 
major third, six, we would go to the dominant seven, flat seven. See, because if I did this, it would be an F sharp instead of an F, just like we did with that E minor, having an F over E minor. So again, these are just little tips that you can use to kind of keep things in the key. Major six to dominant seven. Major six to major seven. Major six to major seven. F, C, to F, to G, to F, to C. Which again is a much more interesting way to me personally to play a one, four, five. So again, covering a lot of ground in this lesson because we got these minor cool inversions and adding these little licks right there. And then again, just drill that. That's kind of a saucy little lick. And then you can also pair that with the other stuff, right? So that's why it's cool to learn these tricks and stuff in the same key because we can start with this D minor to F. Let's just say we're just gonna do a chord progression. D minor. And then F. And because I learned these little tricks, I could do D minor. To F. You can tell that like just knowing this can get a little more advanced if you are a little saucier with it, but it all comes from thinking of inflections on top of a chord, adding that last note on top, and then just changing it up. And there's really no limit to what you can do with it. That's why I think it's like a super underrated thing to do to think of like how you're affecting your open chords and then translate that more into your playing through the neck. Sounds really good, just like the quality of a Phoenix Pro personal monitoring system, PTM33. Check out the link in the description. Thank you so much to them for sponsoring the video. Thank you guys for watching. If you have any comments or questions, hit me up in the comment section, Instagram, or the website, and I'll talk to you later. Thanks a lot.